The Oda River flows north from the Oda Mountains in the Czech Republic through western Poland, where it forms the present-day boundary between Poland and Germany. As the second largest river emptying into the Baltic Sea, it's economically important as a transport route. It is navigable for roughly the same distance as it is from Melbourne to Sydney. After the fall of the Roman Empire in the middle of the 5th century, the so-called Great Migration started. All sorts of people began moving through Central Europe. Celts, Balts, Huns, Avars, Goths, Vandals. But the people who spread the furthest and stayed the longest were the Slavic tribes. Slavic tribes eventually took over the area. Hill forts were built to withstand repeated attacks from other warrior bands. Inside the fort was the whole wealth of the tribe. There were more than 2,000 forts between the Vistula and Elba rivers. From the 6th century AD, tribal chieftains fought for power. It was a violent and troubled time. Neighbour fought neighbour. Tribe fought tribe for supremacy. Nearby Germanic tribes called the Slavs Vens. It was common for them to worship gods with more than one head, and for their supreme god to be the god of lightning. For over 500 years, Christian missions tried to convert them. The tribes were equally steadfast in warding off these approaches. The display of religious and cult practices was of great importance to them in their resistance to foreign conquest. Eventually, by the mid-12th century, Slav tribal rulers paid allegiance to German and Danish lords and intermarried with them. The Germans themselves were not a homogenous people. In fact, the various tribes which made up the Germans were so fiercely independent that they did not unite until the late 19th century. For a long time, the Vens in their old settlements and the newly arrived German colonists in their villages lived together in close contact until the Vens were gradually integrated into the greater number of Germans. There was no question of extermination, nor even real subjection of the natives. It was far more a case of infiltration, which imperceptibly changed into absorption. Half the villages in the former East Germany trace their origins back to the period of Slav settlement and bear Slav names. The same is true of towns and cities such as Rostock, Leipzig, Dresden, Brandenburg, Berlin. Petschak, the name is Slavic in origin, although it has a German spelling. Many East German aristocratic names ending in the Slav OW or ITZ testify to the Slav origins even of the ruling classes. Only in the most inaccessible woodlands along the river Zbray did a small Vendish ethnic group survive up to the present day. The ethnic minority known as Zorbs are direct descendants of those early Slavic tribes and still live in the midst of a German-speaking region. After they converted to Christianity, they retained their own language and customs. Most of the customs practiced throughout the year originate from pre-Christian times. In the spinning room in each village, many Vendian customs and traditions were passed down. People organized and planned festivities. Youth learnt Zorbian folk song passed down from generation to generation. The Zorbs are still also known as Vens. Their status was that of a minority in their own country, and persecution forced many to emigrate, notably later, to Texas. The Slav peoples were peasant peoples, largely immune to outside influences. To a peasant, change is something which goes on in towns. Society in Slav areas remained archaic for much longer. The flow of historical time had slowed down. The Zorbs were an exception to the rule. From generation to generation, those in surrounding areas gradually renounced their Slav heritage. It takes a group of people or the whole village community to preserve a custom. The Petchak ancestors, who probably belonged to the Dadazanian or Sopolos tribe, gradually adopted German customs along with their communities. But we're getting ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> 